away, I'm not home. Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. To start, this isn't really a tutorial video, this is more of just like a, a making of video. So for this video, I am actually making a holiday version of Pike Trickfoot from Critical Role. She is one of my favorite cosplays that I have made. I absolutely love wearing her. Uh, back in October for Halloween, I made a cute little uh, witch version of Pike uh, based off of a suggestion from a friend. It's a wonderful suggestion. At that time, I also decided that a holiday pike, like a, a Christmassy pike, could also be really, really cute. Basically, I've had the idea for holiday pike in my head since the end of October, uh, and it is now December 17th, and I have a week until Christmas. Because I have not given myself tons of time to make this costume, I am going to try to do this build in two days. <laughs> I'm using some elements over from my original Pike costume, like the armor is going to get reworn. Basically, all that I have to do for this costume is I want a new prop for her that's a little more holiday themed, and then I have um, fabric to make new clothes for her. And I'm going to attempt to style a new wig. Even though I have definitely procrastinated on starting this costume, I was at least smart enough to get all of my fabric materials uh, through November. So that is all set. All I need to do though to get started on this project is to go get some stuff uh, from a hardware store to make the, the prop. So I'm gonna start on the prop first today and then I will sew on everything tomorrow and hopefully we can get everything done in this uh, two day time period. So, wish me luck. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Gremlin Squatting Hour. For the prop, I am making a base out of insulation foam and then I'm hot gluing all of the layers together. Insulation foam can be kind of hard to prime as many things like to melt it. So I'm choosing to cover the outside in some two millimeter EVA foam. This will make the priming process a lot easier. I marked a spot in the bottom for a PVC coupler, and I also created some ink caps out of leftover foam. For the edges, I'm adding two different sizes of foam dowels. I have a larger foam dowel that I cut in half, and I also have a smaller half dowel that I added next to it. I'm attaching all of my decorations with hot glue, but contact cement would likely work better. I'm mainly just using hot glue because I was too lazy to get the contact cement after plugging in the glue gun. Once I got all of my dowels on, I started creating some decorative foam bits to sit on top of the hammer. I also added some flat back beads to the sides to mimic riveting. And to finish it off, I am taking some puffy paint and adding some filigree detailing. It is now the next day. Uh, and it is going to mainly be a sewing day. I will be taking some breaks in between the sewing today to start putting layers of uh, Plasti Dip on this so that I can get it primed so that I can paint it either tonight or tomorrow morning. Let me show you guys all the fabric. It's real pretty and I'm excited. So for the main materials, I have this really, really pretty red velvet. I have this really pretty... Uh, I think this is black cherry silk from Silk Baron. I got this matte satin to uh, make a big green bow. Spoiler alert, I didn't use it. And then I also have some more, uh, one matte satin and one regular shiny satin to use as liners and some decorative bits. I was planning to get some green stretch velvet or some other green spandex for um, a pair of leggings. However, when I was researching, I found these on Poshmart. Um, these are actually uh, velvet Spanx leggings, so they're really nice, and I found them for pretty cheap. So we're gonna use those. Also, if you notice this Band-Aid while I was showing off fabric, just ignore it. Um, I burnt myself good with the hot glue last night and the hammer, and I put a Band-Aid over it so that the rats wouldn't mess with it, but then they just messed with the Band-Aid. <laughs> and speaking of the rats, let me show you where they are. They are all three in ratty prison because you're nasty, your cage is nasty, all y'all are nasty. 
So basically the plan for this sewing is uh, to remake my original pike outfit just in these holiday fabrics. So I think for her skirts I can just use these same skirts that I first made as my pattern pieces and just, you know, replicate them. In that, do you like that I'm pointing with my foot? <laughs> Um, and then I still have the pattern that I made for her little jacket, so I will pull that out and just remake it in the Christmas colors. And we are back for Gremlin Hour round two. These are the patterns that I created a while back for my pike cosplay. I think in terms of fabric, um, I'm going to make the center back and the center front both be in silk with uh, both side, front and back, um, in velvet. And then I think this middle insert will also be the silk and these sides will be velvet. Um, and then I think my hood is going to also be velvet. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out and I will start sewing them. My knees don't like Gremlin Hour. The skirt portions are fairly easy um, because I'm going to be putting bias tape on the edges. I don't really need to worry about finishing the edges fully. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do on all three skirt pieces is line them up in the correct fashion. I'm just going to serge the edge of it. Alberts. Check. For the larger skirt, I decided to cut out a wide decorative band for the bottom that I trimmed with some green piping. Okay, so I didn't get to show a whole lot of the process of making this skirt um, because as I started to put on this band, it started to go wonky and it gave me a ton of problems. But we have a skirt. I quickly sewed the coat liner together and then I moved on to the outside. Velvet doesn't really like to be ironed, so I chose to tack my seam down with a folded over stitch on the inside. Here is one sleeve put together. I decided to quilt my uh, silk inset on my sleeves. It's actually really, really easy to quilt fabric. Um, all you really need is two layers of a lightweight or medium weight fabric. If you do it with something heavy, it doesn't really work so well. And then you just need some batting. Um, and I like to take a ruler and a pencil and draw the lines that I'm gonna be sewing on top of. And then you sandwich the batting between these two layers of fabric and just Go on sewing everything up. I added some of that same green piping to the sleeves and once that was all done, I went ahead and attached them to the main body. Once the liner and the outer were complete, I went ahead and serged them together. Yes, I'm doing this in my floor so I didn't have to clear off my table. And I wonder why my back hurts all the time. Now for my favorite part, the puppy sleeves. I simply created a bottom band, and before I sewed up my side seams, I went ahead and measured that band to fit my forearm, and then pleated the bottom of the sleeve to fit within that band. Once that was all on, I went ahead and sewed it up, and then sewed up the side seams. And here is the completed coat. I went ahead and finished off my edges with some bias tape. 
I also just realized that I don't have the right zipper for this project. I needed a separating zipper for the front and I bought a closed bottom zipper. And here is where we are at for the night. This costume is being modeled by my, my lovely mannequin. Her name is Helen. Say hi, Helen. I still need to put a waistband on my skirt, which I'll do here in a minute. Um, for the zipper that I need for the front here, uh, I'm gonna either just steal a zipper off of an old cosplay or I will go first thing in the morning to buy one. And lastly, the hood is currently on hold until tomorrow as well, simply because the fur trim that I got to put on the hood uh, was delayed in shipping from today until tomorrow, so. <laughs> Oh gosh, I can tell it's late because my hair is doing wild things. Um, anyway, like I said, it's gotten fairly late, so I'm going to wrap up the little bit of sewing I have left and head to bed, and um, I will paint my hammer and all that kind of stuff quickly in the morning. To paint my hammer, I am using silver and gold rub and buff. I always wear gloves when I use rub and buff to keep my hands clean. Uh, rub and buff is one of my favorite ways to get a metallic finish because it's nice and shiny when you're done. And I did not get it on video, but for my handle, I actually found an old prop handle from a battle axe that I am using and then I attached a big red bow to it. Alright, so I have my contacts in and I have a wig cap on. I'm going to quickly throw on my ears. Pike's makeup is pretty basic, so I'm going to go ahead and speed through this. You know, a good foundation and concealer really covers a multitude of sins. and I'm gonna actually show you guys how I do this because I get asked quite a lot. I have two colors of brown water activated uh, paint that I use. I have a lighter like tan color and then a dark brown and I also use a stippling sponge. Mine has definitely seen better days. <laughs> I took one end and kind of blunted it off and rounded it off so that you wouldn't get strong straight lines unlike this side. First go in with the light color and just start gently dabbing on your face. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the darker color and I'm just doing the same thing over. And then at the very end, I like to take the dark one and a tiny, tiny brush and just dot a couple bigger freckles. It. For my scar, I'm using some liquid lipstick and rigid collodion. I apologize, I didn't really show you the wig process, but uh, I'm not very good with hair and wigs, so...
All right. <laughs> I am back from taking photos. It was kind of awkward. A lot of people stared at me, but I did have one little kid tell me that I looked awesome and that's that's all the validation that I need. <laughs> no, I don't think this video has had enough enough rat in it. Let me let me go get one of the rats. How is this, huh? Is this weird? Is this weird? Oh, oh, she's getting in the fur. She's getting in the fur. <laughs> Does this look like one of those weird Christmas family photos? Obviously, did not quite make it in the two-day time frame that I was trying to make it in, but that's okay, it still got done. I actually kind of enjoyed making this video and just doing like a, a fun little walkthrough of the process. Um, if you enjoyed watching this, let me know in a comment down below, because I might make some more of these in the future. I will be making more videos in the future, even if it's not this format of like costume walkthrough, you know, like I do have some other tutorials and things like that planned. Oh yes, you noticed the camera. <laughs> If you enjoyed watching this video, go ahead and subscribe, uh, I guess if, if you want, I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> I am gonna go take this wig off because it's giving me such a massive headache from the exactly 52 bajillion bobby pins that I put in it. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and bye for now! Oh, Kisa. Oh, Keith, so pretty. No, come back. No.